Indy 88, it's Bob in studio live with J.J. Wild. J.J. Wild, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm, I am imagine not as tired as you are. I'm exhausted. Oh I'm not my lie. goodness. <laughs> I'm looking at this, uh, the announcement on your website. I'm looking at uh, of your, you've been going since the beginning of October. Hell on yeah. Your, is this your first headlining tour? Second. Second Second headlining, headlining tour. tour. It's been about two years, though. Yeah. So it, it kind of feels like the first one again. <laughs> yeah. And, you, like, you're playing a lot. You were in London, uh, Ontario last night. Yes. And you so came right fun. here. The fact that you're here yeah. at this time is remarkable. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. That was, a, that was a late night, early morning. But that's tour, baby. <laughs> yeah. Do you love touring life? I do. Yeah. I honestly do. I, I feel like I get restless if I'm in one place for too long. Right. No matter what the, no matter what it is. <laughs> well, you're you're kind of local, like you're from Kitchener yeah. originally, right? Yeah. When did you know that this was what you needed to do? I was pretty young. I mean, I've always loved music. I grew up in a very musical household. Okay. And as soon as I could play guitar, I think I was like 15 or 16. It was like, okay, I want to do this in some avenue. I yeah. didn't know how yet, right. but that was when I kind of knew. And then when I started playing gigs, I think I was 18 when wow. I played my first gig. And that's when I was like, okay. This is it for me. <laughs> Su- supportive parents? Yes. Yeah. They they are supportive. I have to say the first time I quit a like full-time job, I was working right. at Mercedes and it was like a cozy job. They were trying to, you know, promote me in the company. Sure. It was going well and I quit. Cold turkey. I was like, "No, I'm I'm pursuing music." They were so mad. Sure. They were so Why mad. Why wouldn't at they me. be? Yeah. I, yeah. Do you know what you're giving up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but they understood and and they've been very supportive. Yeah. That's amazing. So when you were like 15, when did you start writing? Did you like like did, when did you know you weren't just gonna do covers and you know? And- um, I think. Well, you know what? I started writing poems before right. I started writing songs. Yeah. I didn't really know what what I was writing. Yeah. But then my first songs kind of came out as I learned to play guitar. So about like 15, wow. I would say. But like, I remember writing poems when I was like 10, yeah. just not really knowing what they were, but it was some kind of creative outlet. Yeah. How does the, has the process, obviously from 15 to now, the process would have changed, but now, yes. like, and when you're on tour, do you have time to even think about not new really. stuff? Not really. Yeah, yeah. Although sometimes, like, if I'm feeling, like the other day we were at a gig and it was after the show and I was just like changing and, um, and packing up my stuff and I started humming something and I had to like run into a quiet space because I was like, ooh, there's something here. Right, right, but right. that doesn't happen often on the road because no. there's so much going on that it's usually about the week after when I've taken a few days to just lay in my bed and yeah. do absolutely nothing. Then all of a sudden it's like everything from tour kind of just spills out. Nice. So it's always like after tour that I yeah. get the most, you know. Kind of get like an inspiration. Yeah. yeah. And it like kind of comes out like a waterfall it. kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I always like to ask artists this. Um, I you know, you said you started doing gigs when you were like eighteen. Mm-hmm. When did you when did you realize that people were getting it? Like do you do you remember like when people started maybe singing along oh. or do you have a, that moment anywhere? I don't know. I feel like I kind of still have imposter syndrome in that sense where I'm like, even at like a sold out show. You're a rock star, by the way. You're not an imposter. You're a rock star. (laughs) Sorry to interrupt. (laughs) Even at a sold out show, I'll be like, is anybody going to show up? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I I feel like that's always going to be in my head for some reason. Um, But yeah. Keeps you humble. It does. It does. But no, I think, you know, I used to be in a folk band Funny enough, and we we toured across Canada. I remember the first time hearing people sing our songs, and that was like, <gasps> like it was. I right. cried. I think I started yeah. crying on stage. It's <laughs> such a. I, I I I I play other people's music. I don't play my. I, I DJ. I do this. Yeah. I, I can't imagine the the feeling of, of of something that you've created and people resonating and connecting with it. How how wonderful it it's must feel. It's pretty insane, and it's also I find. Like the singles with that people that more people know yeah. is amazing, but it's when they sing the the B sides and the right. you know what I mean. You the know ones they're that, listening deep. Yeah, that yeah. that really gets me. That yeah. really gets me. Are there are there songs uh, that people are loving right now that surprise you? Um, Bad side is yeah. one that um, I mean I love that song, but again, it wasn't a single. We just kind of released it, and hearing people sing that one, I was like. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's so great. Yeah, that's uh, it's amazing. That's so it must feel so great. It does. I, I love it. Um, I had the opportunity to see you. Actually, I wasn't even working here at the time, but it was Indy 88's birthday party oh, yeah. at History here in mm-hmm. Toronto, which is a fabulous venue. Uh, I saw you open for the Glorious Sons. Now, you were on tour with them for a little bit, was yes. it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I always like, like, so tell me. So I also see like, so you've done all these like, sm- like, like uh, really cool venues like the Opera House you're going to be in tonight. And you, d- but you did, uh, you also did the Festival d'Ete and mm-hmm. uh, a bunch of big festivals. 
festivals. Do you prepare any differently for shows for certain, ve- whether you're opening or v- different venues versus like festivals? Like, how, like what's your mindset going into different types of shows? Yeah, I mean, I think headlining versus opening would be the the biggest difference for me. Yeah. Um, with a headlining set, you have more time. And so I like to try to create little moments in the set. Yeah. That, you know, when you're opening, you kind of just want to play you know, as many of your songs as you can in that little chunk yeah. of time that you have right. to try to 20 get 20 minutes and we're just yeah, going like, to hit them with go. the hits. Right. But when you have a headlining set, you get to take a little bit more time to breathe and you get to create moments in the set and you get to give little stories and stuff like yeah. that. So those would be the huge differences for a festival. It's not really the same because it's almost like an opening slot, but it's not because right. you have more time, but yeah. there's still a, a stacked bill. Yeah. So they're all kind of different, I would say. Yeah, for sure. Do you feel like I've been at festival gigs where a band I like is in the middle of the day or something, right. you know, like four in the afternoon and, mm-hmm. and not, a, and in my opinion, I'm like, not enough people are paying attention to what's going mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. here. What, like how, like, what do you do to deal with that? Do you just, does that, does that discourage you or does that just make you want to crank it up even more? I think it, it makes you hungry to like win them over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it, it gives me a certain type of energy to be like, no, no, you're going to listen. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like almost that negative reinforcement thing. Yeah, like, you can't yeah. tell me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so tonight at the Opera House, uh, still a few tickets left. Yeah. Uh, but not much. Opera House is a fabulous venue. I don't know if you've been in there yet. or Yeah, we, we actually played there, but there was no audience. It was during COVID, and we did... Um, wow. Yeah, I think it was for the SoCan Awards. We did a Pat Benatar um, tribute thing, oh, and cool. it was all filmed. But it was so weird because we did a couple of our songs and then that song. And it's so funny to to be like, you finish the song and everything. And then there's just like three people behind the camera being like. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's like the golf clap. I'm like, all right. (laughs) I think we all we all had that. I I, I mean, I think when I when I think about COVID, I mean, I think the people who might might even be worse is comedians. You know, people trying to tell jokes. (laughs) There's no feedback at all. Yeah. It's like being on the radio. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) You're you're talking to a microphone and hoping people are liking it. Yeah. Well, JJ Wild, tonight at the Opera House, thank you so much for coming in. We're going to have you uh, sing a song here for us. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll get, um, uh, we hope for a a new album next year, maybe, that kind of thing. We'll We'll see. see. Yeah. But congratulations (laughs) on the tour. It's really great. Thank you so much. Performing tonight at the Opera House, the last night of this amazing tour, JJ Wildener. Uh, guys, who am I? T- who are the band? What am I? Sorry, I should have. My name's Dan. My name's JD. Dan and JD and JJ Wild. Hell T- yeah! So happy to have you here live at Indie Eighty Eight. Let's hear what we go- what, what people can expect tonight. An unplugged version. All right, we're gonna do "Best of Me" first off. Let's go, boys. myself up and I go home, stumbling along the yellow line road. It's 5 a.m. Sun is creeping in. Took a wrong turn and ended up going out for one until I got stuck. I'm right then on the wrong side again. Rinse, repeat history. I drank three shots of misery I'm flying on a high again It's almost like I live for the thrill of it Like a rollercoaster ride that I'm not strapped in Get the best of me Hate it but I know that I'll be back Cause it's not the first time and it's not the last I'm deep in, in the deep end Always holding on when I'm coming down If I'm already gone, can I be found? Is this what I'm meant to be my own words? Cause you're right that I'm not strapped in no
get the best of me It's 5.03 a.m., sun is creeping in It's almost like I live for the thrill of it Should be saying no, here we go again Lost my shells, fuck It's almost like I live for the thrill of it Like a roller coaster ride that I'm not strapped in the fire On my vices A last cigarette out in the rain I promise myself I won't do it again And I'm trying But on my vices Get the best of me Get the best of me Safe bed and me in my head high and my tears dry. Get on without my guide. You went back to what you know, so far remote from all. That we went through And I, I leave a troubled track My odds are stayed I go back to black We only say goodbye with words I died a hundred times You go and I go back to us I love you much It's not enough You love blue and I love pole Light is like a pie and I'm a tiny penny rolling up the walls inside. Yeah. We only say goodbye with words. I died a hundred times. You go back to her, and I go back to her. We only say goodbye. Thank you. 